up? It's your girl Tamara, aka a girl from Harlem. And this is Ray Dangs, aka the culture referee. And this is the God Show. Boop, 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 boop. And today we have a very special guest, a legend. I'm gonna tell y'all something. When I was in the sixth grade, somehow, some way, somebody said EPMD and Pac are up at the, up the street at the Blue Flame Lounge. I don't know what happened. I don't even know if you remember this day, but about 500 kids in the Bronx ran. From our school to get autographs from this man. This man is, I mean, like, I'm just, this might be my favorite favorite interview we've ever done. the movie. Juice. Okay. You know that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The movie was Juice. It's the scene where where they robbed the, it's the scene where they robbed the store. EPMD is at the the bar. That day, I can tell you why I was at the day they filmed that. I was in school. We was running for the motherfucking butt. We was running to see them. But everybody give it up for our special guest, Eric Sermon. E-double. The Bronx, Long Island, and Harlem in the house. <laughs> New York. No, no, College Park. College Park. I, I don't yeah, claim, he don't, he don't I, I don't claim, claim the New Bronx. York, by the way. Okay, well, you claim it. Right. <laughs> Period. <laughs> All right, I'm a New Yorker for this one. Let's go. Oh, yeah. I love that. Well, actually, okay. Anyway. Well, I would say you started some shit. Okay, no. We That'd be the biggest argument. <laughs> He's from New York. I'm like, I'm from College Park. Well, let's go. Okay, so we recently celebrated 50 years of hip hop. Yeah. Um, what is one of your favorite moments about hip hop's history? Um... I think the existence of hip hop, you know, for me to be a, a young kid and to be able to hear songs that was like, you know, something I never heard before. And then the big one came out, Rappers of Light, changed the whole world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, changed my view of what, you know, what, what I was going to do, what I wanted to do when I heard Rappers of Light. Wait, no, you got you to gotta tell us more. Paula, so did you know you was going to be here this long? No way. I, I knew that the fact that. I was rapping since I was 11 years old. 12 years old in my neighborhood was a big rap community in Long Island. Mm-hmm. We didn't know about the city, about Brooklyn and Manhattan and Bronx. And I thought hip-hop started where I was at. <laughs> you know? That's crazy. Because we had graffiti, break dance, the same thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, I was rapping early. And the whole neighborhood was doing the same thing. So um, when I moved to Parrish's neighborhood, I was kind of cool because I came from the, the cool neighborhood that mm-hmm. I was at to where he was at. So I was already kind of advanced because he didn't rhyme. Mm-hmm. You know? So, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what made you want to rap? So yeah, that's what I, again, the, the neighborhood was already rhyming. Oh, because it was already there. Yeah, it was already something. But again, you had all those stuff before. The Bronx was had a lot of stuff going on. They had, Steelers for the Cold Crush, you know, uh, of course, you know, um, Grandmaster Flash, Million Man, so all that stuff was already out. Mm-hmm. So we had stuff to go on. But Rabbit's Delight came and went mainstream. And then mm. that mm. made it seem like, okay, well, you know, you can, this might can happen. But not like making records. Run DMC came out. You know, they fast forward to Run DMC. Mm-hmm. That's 83, you know. That's what really sets things off. So when so when did you when did y'all form EPMD, and 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 from where you formed it when did you get your deal? Well, I moved to Paris the neighborhood to my grandmother's crib, and I stayed there. I met Paris at the bus stop, and then like that was like ninth grade. Then tenth grade we made a demo, but we had to like pause because Paris played quarterback and kicker at college at Southern Connecticut, so we had to wait a, a year or two or whatever. So from that time to. 1986, 86, those two years were gone because he was in college. 87 came around, and um, it, um, I think it was Red Alert and Mr. Matter was playing some songs, and I heard MC Light cram to understand. Mm. Lost my mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. So then the next weekend, we heard some whack stuff on the radio. So we're like, man, if they can do it, we can probably make something happen. Mm. <laughs> so, Paris' brother was in the record business at one time, and and um, he got the number from the studio from this guy named Charlie Murata, who we end up doing Red Man there, Das FX there, Keith Murray, there, I mean, K Solo there, and EPMD there too. At that's one in the uh, attic upstairs, and um, but eighty seven was the first record we made was "It's My Thing" and "You a Customer." Those were the two singles that because we made singles. Yeah. Then, then the album came out. Those two records, uh, it went quick. Mm. So that was 87, November 87. Mm. And then 
again, but we had got we had shot the deal. We had looked at the the album covers that you had in your house with your you know the, the records your mother and them had. We went on the addresses and went to Manhattan. And we went to three places. We walked and parked the car and went to three places. We stopped by Sony, some other place though too, and we stopped by Independent called Fresh Records. Yeah. And we met some um, some guy named Virgil, and he's like, "Yo, come back." And we and we got a phone call. And we made those two singles, and we, they took off. We got an album deal. We got signed for seven hundred fifty dollars a piece. Hold on, what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Seven hundred fifty. Do- I wasn't expecting that. I thought you said 750000 You know, you're like, hold on. Right here. We had the third worst contract. EPMD, Biz Marquee, and somebody else that got mm-hmm. signed. And I went to Marshalls, and I went to and I went to um, Pathmark, the grocery store. Took groceries in the crib for moms, and then they got me an um, a outfit for Marshalls. Mm. But it didn't matter, though, because we didn't. All we wanted to do was be on the radio. So the 750 was just an extra bonus, you know. Oh, my God. Wait, so how were you surviving if, like, did you have a side job? I'm 17. He's 17. Wait, no, because the other one was in college. That's why I was like, hold on, what do you got going on here? Okay. Yeah, 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 but, 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 um, but, but. Well, 17, I'll take it. Nah. 750. Yeah. So, 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 but but he was was 18. Okay. So he was already in, uh, no, he went to school for football. Mm -hmm. And he was there early because they was like, you know, when you, when you, when you nice, they come get you. So at 17, they came and got you. Yeah. So. So so at at the time, you know, we, we were still young kids. He was a year older than me. So when you're going in the game, who are you looking at as your biggest competitor? There's no competitors. It's the fact that I just watching the game. I'm watching every month somebody would come out incredible. And mm-hmm. then my mentor came out, Rock Him. And that's when I lost my mind. Mm-hmm. Like completely lost my mind. And then Biz Marquis came and then I was like, This is it for me. Cause I took a, a cassette. One side was Rock Kim, um, uh, Eric B. for President, and the other side was uh, um, Biz Marquis, um, Nobody Beats the Biz. And I would play it for a half an hour on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but the, the fast, the, the before, before that, my friend was in school saying, Some guy named Rock Wind is out. Yeah. No, didn't know his name was Rock Kim. Rock Wind. <laughs> <laughs> So Rock Wind, Eric, and he rhymed like you, slow. Cause I have a list, so I had to rhyme slow. So yeah. he rhymed slow too. So when I heard him, it was I knew that we can make this thing because mm. he made it. You know what I said? But everybody that came out, they was like I I got a chance to hear Chaos One. I got a chance to hear Kane, Biz, Light, Rock Kim, um, you know, Run DMC. Of course, they was before me. So I knew not to come out whack. I knew I had to come out with something. You know what I'm mm, saying? I had to, yeah. I'm watching all this, so there's no way I'm going to lose. Yeah. And it wasn't even a boasting thing. The fact that we knew what to make and what to come out with and how to sound. I, I just want to say one thing. Eric B for President is the first rap song I ever heard in my life that I was like, that's for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like Rappers of Light, all that, I mean, I was born 79, but yeah. I, 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 you, I liked hip hop, but it was kind of like, it was kind of like fun and commercial. Like Run DMC, I feel like everybody should like them. Yeah. But Eric B is right. It was something about the his voice. He changed the game. It was something about his voice. Like I came in the door. I that said changed, it. I was like, what the? He changed the landscape of how the rap music was gonna go from the Run DMC era. Yes. DMC said that when he heard that, he looked at Run and said, "Run, I think our time might be up." That song. Yes, I'm t- I'm t- I don't know what it is about that that I don't know what it was about Rakim, but it was something about him that just felt like the rawest version. He's like, talked about now, yeah, in schools, yeah. He was nobody was doing that right now. You hear him say the things that he says right now. There's no way that he was saying that in '88. There's no way. That's crazy. Do you think lyricism has been lost in hip hop and rap? Yeah, because nobody, because the kids nowadays don't look at this. They say we, we don't like rhyming and MC. The whole mm. nine. This is how the kids speak nowadays. We don't care about what lyricists is doing. You know, right now my thing is like, listen, I'm gonna get this off the top. Let's I, go. I ain't a hater. I had a, I was, I always had money my whole entire career. I knew you would. I'm a producer. I'm not a rapper. I produced everything. Yes. I produced everybody. Sign artists first and everything. By so the way. when I speak, it ain't from a hatred point. It's the fact that where music is going in 
where music has went and just like no type of education or to tell a kid nothing. Like we told them something. You know I mean, just mm. anything. Mm. You know, and right now we're at a spot where they don't believe in nothing. They're not scared of nobody. They don't trust nobody. They don't have nothing. So that's why, like, I came to Ray's show. I watch y'all. I watch y'all argue. I watch y'all argue about the same thing, about things that mean stuff. Yeah, I think Kim is better than Nikki. Nope, Nikki's better than Kim. Yeah, you're right. That's an argument. Because then the argument brings you to be like, who's little Kim? Yeah. Because you know Nikki, but who's the other girl they're arguing about? So education about knowing these people so we don't want to dismiss them. You can't dismiss something that, that somebody done paved the way for you or, the, or, or, or brought you in here and then made you be able to. That's why I look at some people that came before me. Like, who hurt supposed to be in a mansion somewhere or somebody's office somewhere, somewhere, somewhere chilling somewhere in, in the, any way he want to be? Comfortable as fuck. Because I he agree. did this. How, yep. how could we not pay for his, 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 his bill that when he was sick? Yep. I don't understand, I, I, you know, and the, those people who made it, you mm. know who those who made it, yep. who's bigger than us. Yep. Like, you can do that. Yeah. You know, we can send a couple of $5,000 here and there, but we can't send what you can send. Yes. And, and the power is that and those big guys who made it and didn't even look to send them something, you know, this is where we at. So I feel like how you feel. You know, if I can go out there and do as much talking as possible, and if I get two kids to listen to me, and two kids follow that path to, to move forward, then I'm, I did my job. I, I agree. By the way, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think that hip hop is the only culture that writes off our legends as mm -hmm. old. I was literally about to ask that. Like, do we think that there's a lack of respect for the OGs in hip hop coming from the 90s? Latifah was on a show one time. She was like, they wanted her to go to the hip hop awards, but they had old school Latifah next to her name. She says, take that old school off my name and, and I show up. Because mm. mm. they don't say old school thing, old school Madonna, yes. old school Paul McCartney, old school Cher. It just says Cher. Mm -hmm. It just says, you know, the name. It don't say the old, they don't, don't have that. Madonna, that's it. Cher's 75 on tour. Mick Jagger's 107. He's still making <laughs> 450 million dollars on tour. Oh, yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And it's, so it's, on, it's only, I, by the way, I think us. that that's the importance of pods because like i was saying like my son like people say to us all the time why do y'all talk about kim and nikki i'm like or compare people i'm like my son was born in 2008 michael mm -hmm. jordan stopped playing in 2003 mm -hmm. my son knows everything about michael jordan mm -hmm. because of the lebron versus jordan conversation yep. like literally he's like who is this guy mind you he thinks lebron is better you yeah. know i ain't mad at him for that right. but he's like lebron is the best jordan's number two Mm. Like you didn't even see him play. You didn't yeah, even know yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a Knicks fan. Yeah. I'm like, you don't know how it feels to have mm. your like somebody like as long as he was playing, That's I knew we that. wasn't gonna win. We went to the finals when he retired. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was the first we, we knew it was like finally this nigga is gone. Nobody yeah. thought like that to somebody. So, but my point is is that in our culture, we should be able to say, like, even like I'm a, I can't get out my head that I'm talking to you. Cause I can't, cause I remember vividly the day running to meet you. Mm. So my mind is like, what I look like said, but I'm on. I don't give a fuck about that. That mm. feeling I'll never get again. Yeah. That mm. feeling of opening the CD, dog. That feeling of like I didn't. Yeah. I'm being honest. I don't. Mm. I didn't know what cross the um the crossover was. I didn't understand yeah. what that. Remember, yeah. I'm like ten years old. I'm like, what are yeah. they talking about? Talking it's like about. the way you talk, the way you walk, the way you eat. I don't remember what the hook mm. says exactly, yeah. but it's like. Keep the car. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is that? Oh, they talking about sellouts. Yeah. What's a sellout? Right. You, don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't even know what that is in 19 fucking 90 or 90, whatever. I don't know what a sellout yeah. is. I learned that from EPMD. Mm -hmm. So my mind is like, why the fuck? That's what this shit is about, I hear bro. all the time, though, when I, when I did Gold Digger, they was like, um, the, ball, the ball players was like, yo, good looking, man, because I, I don't know what, what group me from a Gold Digger to where the woman that really <laughs> liked me was from. Yeah. And I just knew what the Gold Digger was. That then not Kanye West with Ye. End up doing it later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying before, but again, he had hit me on the phone and said, Yo, Eric, I'm doing hip hop honors. Come do your verse after mine. Yeah. But I ain't picked the phone up, though, but I ain't just had to do that, though. <laughs> but, but again, the gold the digger phone. thing, now the new kids was able to know what a gold digger was, too. But yeah. When I did it, it was like that, too. Yo, what are you talking about? I'm talking about a girl that wants to get your money. You know, they want to get you, you know, you, for you to get her pregnant and get half and then prenup and. I was talking about prenups in 91. Bro, I'm telling y'all, bro. 
I, I never heard that word. And then it became like, don't be a sellout. That was because of EPMD. We were saying that. Yeah, I'm saying, but it was it was still about sellouts. It was like, don't be a sellout. Don't cross yeah. over. Damn, what the fuck? Is Even though I I was wrong for that, because <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I was doing marketing with, with like Hammer was doing. We was mad at Hammer for doing commercials. Yeah, you know yeah. That was the, now you see. Yeah, monsters everything. You know. Yeah, but hit, but but I, I don't know if Hammer is still performing his music the way you guys can. I, and no, no. I, by the way, I love Hammer, but I'm just right. saying I feel like. Hammer was a spectacle. And what's the spectacle? It's like a thrill. Once the thrill is right. gone, it was nothing raw about it. It was nothing about it that made me say, like, it was just kind of like a moment in time where it was like, man, we was wearing them pants. Remember that? You know no. what I'm saying? Nah, nephew. <laughs> <laughs> I just had the same comment before I came here. That's said crazy. That the, the new people, my first album is 35 years, June 7th. Yeah. Right? Congratulations. I'm still working. Yeah. If I want to work. <laughs> you know, I, I'm at Yankee Stadium August 11th. Mm. I'm at Madison Square Garden September 15th. Mm. I, I'm at this theater here in, in, in Atlanta July 1st and 2nd. The, the not the Lakewood, but the one that started with the M, the Maple House. Yeah. So I just took 10 shows. But this is 35 years of this. Yeah. If you don't make music, how you working? Yeah. Because it's the moment. The majority of the songs that we hear is the moment. Mm. With respect to Nikki, but. Those young women is not going to go and see my anaconda at 40 mm -mm. or 38. Mm -mm. And they're going to match with them with a wife, children, a husband, and the house. It's the moment. Mm. So I've told them, you got to make some music. You have to have something that is real enough for you to be able to work. Yes. So the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and when you see... Charlie Wilson out here still, he can. Because yes. the Gap Band, they made, so he can still work. Yes. So we still can work. Don't ever ask what my error is doing. This is the minimum, though, um, Nisi. $10,000 minimum. Yeah. Right? But they ain't making 10. They probably, some is 15, yeah. some is 20. Yeah. Depends on what, which one it is. If it's Kane or if it's, if it's um, Slick Rick or Dougie, whatever. Dougie do 200 shows a year. Mm-hmm. Say if it was a minimum ten grand. Yeah. Two hundred, ten thousand, add it up. Ten million, right? No, that's, that's two million, I mean. I don't know, a doctor, a lawyer, somebody don't ever ask what my friends or colleagues are I wonder what they're doing now. I know what they're doing. They get to the this money. Is the minimum. <laughs> Millionaires. At the minimum, I do ten shows a year. I'm not really a performer. I don't make no money from shows. Kane. All these, the, all the minimum do 80 shows a year. Yeah. Biz was at 180 shows a year. Mm. Dougie's at 200. These are people that do shows, whatever. But even at the minimum, if they're doing 50 shows a year at 10,000, what's the number? So, yeah, that's, 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 half, that's half a million. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Make it, that's great fucking money. I don't money. care. You tell, <laughs> don't you ever yeah. ask a question and say, I wonder what they're doing now. Mm-hmm. But can I be real with you? They made up. You guys made a moment in time that takes us there. So even as you was walking in, we playing. You know, uh, uh, so what you saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that shit remind me. I'm riding a car with Uncle Derek, and it's like Uncle Derek playing EP. Like that's what I got goosebumps. That's what music does. Mm -hmm. It takes us places. That's why we want to be there. It's like I just I can't comprehend it. I can't comprehend how people write people off. Like I of I just can't believe that people. I'm like, do you know who they are? Like yeah, but don't. Your last combo with the, with homeboy, it don't matter what they say. Yeah, it don't it matter like the few of them that because it would be the ignorant ones. Like for me, giving this thing, I hope they see it and tell them about the number or the minimum about. But the people that still making tons of money, and you sitting here thinking that you the man and you're not making more money than them because they still can tour and make money for thirty five years mm -hmm. and they still making at the minimum with fifty shows. Five hundred thousand mm. dollars. You tell me who's doing that. You know this right. is a, this is the minimum. I'm only giving this more. I don't know. The, and, my and, colleagues, and I don't think nobody's getting ten thousand. None my of them. Like number. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm saying, but even if they are doing it for the moment. Yeah. This is thirty five years of this. Yes. It's, it's built on everybody's back. It's like literally. That's why I feel like hip hop should have some kind of union because you're right. The OG shouldn't have to go out there and dance for their tips. Like, Cool Herc should not have to do that. Like, we are here 
Like, dog, hip hop has made more millionaires than black Anybody. millionaires than anything. Doctors, lawyers, but I don't know if you world, had them all in the world. The world is is ran on this. Yes. Every commercial you ever watch, yep. every Disney channel, yep. every kids show, yep. everything that you ever looked at had was hip hop influence. Mm -hmm. Without that hip hop, this world is not colorful. Mm. Mm. Don't That's look like this. Put it on a t shirt. Don't look like this. <laughs> That's this, crazy. So this, this, so this thing that you know we, uh, you know, um, had learned from those who who bring it to us, we tried to. Um, and I tell myself too. I said. Um, one day it might be it may be us after this though too we mm -hmm. tell yourself because I swear if I had if I had I do what I can, you know, and I got receipts on it what I mm -hmm. can do, but I don't make that money that the ones who mm -hmm. got you know, of course you know the names of course mm -hmm. the, the stars that are making like, a million dollars to man, get out of bed. You, what if it's like for you to say, yo man, here's five million dollars? Yes, from your eight hundred million, like yo, yes, look where you at? Yeah. This culture did this for you. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. if I start a fundraiser right now to be like, yo, let's hook up something for homeboy. Nobody's moving. Mm-hmm. They're going to they gonna do with me. Yeah. They don't understand it has everything to do with you. The way you said about about your mother. Yeah. Yeah, I say, I'll say, I know, I, I know what hip-hop did for my mother. I know my mother didn't know. That was the deep that. shit I heard yesterday you told me. Aww. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And I send a condolences to you and your right. family about yeah. yours. So I know that. But I'm like, I know what hip hop did for my family. I know, like, dog, I look at everybody in here. Like, one of my best friends runs Stone Mountain. Like, this is this our culture, my nigga. I could talk like this, my nigga, and make money. Mm. Can't get no better than that. We had to code switch at one point. Black people had to code switch to make money. Hip hop is the first time that black people can make money without code switching. Without having to talk, hey, you know how that shit go when you mm -hmm. when a bill collector mm -hmm. call your mom ass phone. Hello, who's it? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. And they be like, oh, it's just you. What's up, motherfucker? <laughs> black people. Yeah. Hip hop was the first time black people did not have to code switch. We wow. could be our fucking yeah. self, talk like us, and and what really fucked us up was that all their kids showed up to the shows. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you know what you did for me? You're my hero. <laughs> like imagine somebody kid telling you, this time, you're the hero. We're we living in 2023. Black people, this is the best time for us at this time. And I'm going to repeat it again. We have all the information that Whitey got. Mm. So it's on you to do what you need to do. There's no more excuses. We used to be able to say, yeah, I know about we have the resources and we're behind and, and our pay is lower. I get all that. Mm -hmm. Now we have the same information. Yep. Now it's about what they don't care about the color. It's about you want to get it. Who don't care about the color? No, he's right. By the way, who don't care about color? She, 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 she she's who don't care about color. Okay, I was letting you go. No, 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 no. We, the no, information's no. out there, but we don't. We still face no, different no, obstacles no, than I, white I, people. No, believe I know that. Okay, but, I gotta make sure we know but, that. But <laughs> see, see, I figured this. So I gotta get this. I, I love her argument. <laughs> but listen, mm -hmm. what I mean, the fact that with the information. There, for you to not have to worry about that obstacle at this time. There's a man over there who runs Stone Mountain. There's a whole bunch of us out here too. And if you're not going to go get it, then of course you're going to have that mentality of yes, I'm going to get stopped. Oh, uh, uh, let me say another thing. Can I say another thing? No, let me tell you why. Let me. He's right. Let me tell you why. Hit me out, Tamara. Go ahead. There was a point in time where you had to wear a suit, or you was a drug dealer. That's how you made money. Like, you was like, mm -hmm. you like, or you was the sports. But this is the first time where you can be yourself and get paid. Mm -hmm. You can, like, Tamara, you are controversial as fuck. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody stop you. Because there is an audience that likes that, what you're saying. is like, keep talking that shit. And it's other people that's like, why does she do that? It doesn't matter. There's an audience for everybody and, right, and everything. What you're saying. Yeah. Of course there's obstacles. Yeah. But you don't have to be going through that obstacle. And yeah, I'm not saying use it as a disability. I'm not saying right. have that in the back right. of your head all the time. Right. But I'm saying we have to be realistic. But Tamara, yeah. listen, mm -hmm. Tamara. When That's I when I, when I was a kid, ten years old, there was no black billionaires. You're getting mm -hmm. it now. Though, there was huh? no yeah, black. Like yes. literally, you got Puff, Dre, J. We got not even Yay. the big ones. Just the names we don't know about. Yeah. They getting it. Mm -hmm. These young kids is getting it. Mm -hmm. They getting it, and that's what I'm saying. And they getting it because they don't know what they up against. And if they knew, they wouldn't have went exactly. for it. 
Right. And so you got so when you tell people when you tell people no. that <laughs> when you tell people that you're giving them <laughs> you're giving them excuse. Right. <laughs> See, I've been trying to give y'all a little moment. No, no, no. Listen, no, no. But I'm saying no. It's it's like we understand. We get you. We you right too. One day, well, let me right say. Too. One day, your ki- one day. Let me middle. tell you. So one day you're gonna have kids, and one mm-hmm. day your kids gonna come to you, and they're gonna tell you something about how hard it is, and you'll be excuse. And you either gonna support that excuse, or you are gonna tell them fuck that excuse. But if you support it, you're enabling them in their bullshit. I don't give a fuck how hard it is. The first real world moment I had in my life, I worked at Chick Fil A when I was sixteen with my mother. Wow. My mother worked at Chick Fil A. I we never were, heard that before. Yeah, we wow. worked. I opened Chick Fil A in the airport. That's and guess weird. what? My mother was, was the night. The my mother was a night manager, and I worked in a day. And I had a supervisor that was talking crazy to me. And the supervisor was like one of those young supervisors, like eighteen years old. Mm. And he was going off on me. And I told him, I checked him, and my mom was like, "You can't do that." He is your boss. Now, when I, it fucks me up when I think about it. I don't like to go there because it's like, damn, that's how we was raised. But I'm glad that hip-hop was there. So now that motherfucker going to work for me. And to me, that's what hip-hop does. So you can't hold people. You can't tell people what they up against. You got to support them. Because even, even as Eric is telling us, he's like, simple. I made a demo. I went to three labels. Got a deal. $750. And everybody's like, oh, but look, 30 Five years later, 36 years later, still here getting it, bro. You can't that that those stories did not exist. And so why y'all let white people in? I really I've been trying to. Not we didn't say let the them in. Time. We okay. didn't let them in. They controlled this shit. <laughs> no, no. No, you're right. He's right. No, we could do it. But again, at the end of the day, um, if that was our safe space, you're right. But but but, but you're right. We we we. We you write about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all. But, but, but they, Thank you. I see the little clap. Yeah, Thank but, you. But I got one. But, but, they, but they, is this like it is now too? They own everything. I'm yeah. about to say they had the information. And, um, and the, and, but they own everything. And, and they had the re- the money, the resources, the whole nine. And we could have probably like not have it last this long. You write mm. about that. Again, and and it's, it's like it's like the thing that Ye said too. He 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 worded it wrong, but they are all the lawyers. They yes. all own the banks. They all all the they, all of it. They run all of it. Yes. And but so so but um, it's hard to try to um, to get control of something that we are so far behind. Yeah. You know, and then you have those blacks that we talk about who are big, who's not trying to turn the ladder back down. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that's that's why we don't own shit because we don't, own we don't have uh, nobody. To, we don't have the stick together part of, of this. Like, say, there's a, a say there's a strip mall, right? Mm-hmm. And there's Puerto Ricans, and there's white, and there's you. Mm-hmm. There's a black woman. The black woman is not going to call uh, her black friend and say, yo, there's a storefront open. But that Puerto Rican would, yep. that Chinese would, whatever, because you want to be the only black person in that storefront. Yes, because black people think there's only room for one black person at the table. Who taught us that? Tra- the world. We don't have to believe I'm it no more. Go there with slavery, We're not going to believe that no more. We don't have, yeah. but it's still the reality of the situation. I get it and with I'm that. with you guys with on that. the information's yeah, out there, but yeah. the resources still aren't there. No, we no, no. Still right. don't but have here's the thing resources. the resources are in our hands. Right. And what I'm telling it's you, that's that what I'm talking about. No, no, no. It ain't that easy, but he's, in a way, he's right, ma. What else are we going to do? Complain or get off our ass and do something? Build an app. Make it happen. Make an app. <laughs> See a problem, build an app, make it happen. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like we, we need. I to get. Her, I get her argument. I, no, no. But, she, but, 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 you're right. By the but, way, but she's not trying to see it though. What's what's happening about people that's getting it, and they are are are, are showing it, and 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 that and that other side is, can't stop it. Not now. And not only that, they kids love it. They can't stop. They it kids now. love it, and they know Before it. Or they could. They can't now. Yeah. We are the majority. And we running this shit. We are. Get the money. No, we are. Okay. You have to focus on <laughs> my sorry. thing. Is, you, my thing is this: is that you, you just that, you on that with that man and that guy. <laughs> that last conversation, you you stuck on that. <laughs> <laughs> I just about to pick me up. I just about to get some money. I can get my fast shit, get my shit going, so I can get up. That's where you at. I get it. I, I'm gonna tell you something. We. I want, I, I, I want to say something. I, I didn't <laughs> tell nobody this. I just want to say this, and y'all don't have to agree with me. Oh, Lord, Ray about to piss me off. I'm about to piss you off. I know it. <laughs> I can feel we it. speak about getting a head start, catching up, being behind, and we speak about reparations. Mm-hmm. 
black people, we had a we had a small window of what reparations oh, looked yeah, like in ass. 2020. So that's in 2020. And guess Dior what? And guess Champagne what? Greenbrier Mall and the black shops the were Gucci not fucking packed. No, this Gucci sacks. What, you, it was bonnets in there. Mm. It was it was it was it was yeah. lace fronts everywhere. Yeah. Everybody got money because it and and guess what we did? We all gave the money back. Yeah. So it's not about resources. It's about information. It's about learning what us. to do when it's time. We don't have a plan. Yes. If they give us reservation right now, we're gonna give it right back to them. Listen, right Doctor Uma went. Um, that's one of my faves because I'm crazy Dr. like him. <laughs> Doctor Uma, don't laugh because that 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 is my idol. <laughs> okay? I love Doctor Uma. <laughs> So like he it. went viral recently for saying, "Don't give these niggas no reparations until they have the right information." Yes, but of course that Im- that got lost. He just went no, viral no. for saying, "Don't give it to them yet because during the pandemic, y'all lost your minds." Yeah. There was just a ju- I Somebody was on the internet the other day gave a jeweler half a mil for a chain. Yeah, an Asian jeweler once again. You know? Y'all yeah, I saw that. Eighty percent, eighty-five percent of the black dollar goes to the Asian community. Can I tell you what reparations should look like? I'm, I'm not paying. I'm gonna taxes. tell you what reparations should oh, look like. Wait, I don't got no money yet. But. We shouldn't have to pay taxes, Never pay. and we shouldn't have to pay for college. Amen. Don't give us no I money. Like Just give us college for free. Like we should this. have to pay for college. We have to pay taxes. Like we should. It's certain things that we should not have to pay, and that's what reparations look like. And you know who will be rewarded? The people that want to work. Mm-hmm. You can't give. We all know we got some motherfuckers in our family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> give me a million dollars. I know what to do with it. We got some motherfuckers in our family. It was like they should have never gave yeah, you like niggas money. Yeah. <laughs> Braxton with a million dollars. We are oh, fucked. He coming to work late. He coming to work late. He like fuck y'all. I'm a millionaire, nigga. Hey, you spent five dollars. You're not a millionaire anymore. Right. <laughs> Motherfucker, you better get ready like for your taxes. Right, so right, right, I would rather reparations <laughs> for. I would rather reparations for black people that like free college. And we don't have to. We can pay taxes, businesses. but give us um, shits, LLC, LLC. Give us loans for it. businesses. It okay. should be programs yeah. that we. That that's should be what it's for. Language. Yeah, that's what reparation look like. Okay. Not because yeah, right. we know it was. It was niggas that got them that dumb PPP loans. <laughs> Yeah. Nigga, remember the nigga made the song Rolexes about it? All you need is all you need is a, uh, a social security number, and I'm gonna get you a. What? We are some stupid mother. I'm sorry, I'm not educational, go to bro. Because of because of how again? Those are two people who says from, all the information's in your hand from, from the Willie Lynch. Gotta want it. From the Willie Lynch program. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Willie Lynch program that we live in right now. Yep, it's still working. That's what we in right now. We are. Programmed, and unless we get educated, we gonna still be in the same exact place as as a people. It ain't our fault. But we are. We, they messed us up badly. You have making talking language. She's badly. happy. And 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 we just again, um, we are just one people who you know sometimes you know you get frustrated. You do. You get. Mad. I'm like, what am I mad for? I can't change the world. I can't make these people change because I want to be able to make them change and make us wake up and and, and read and, and look at what we can do. Yep. If we stick together and spin black and, and, and buy black and then get together and get our own bank and, and what I, we talk about. This. I'm tired of talking about it. And it's really sad because we're tired of talking about something that, again, is almost like this is not this. We gave, as you know what it's like? It's frustrating because you realize you're giving them more power. Because now you're asking for something. And for me, I got to the point in my life, Tamara, where I was like, fuck all of y'all. Not fuck y'all like I don't like y'all. I am saying. Fuck y'all. I got I to gotta go. Because my to mother go. is yeah. not going to be out here because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go directly to the people. And we all have that option yeah. now. And the people that want it are going to get it. And the, p- the reason why so many people have PPP money, because all you have to do is log on to a website, type in a couple words. And that's all you have. Two days later, you got a wire for 40 grand. Mm-hmm. My cousin moved the fuck out of my house. I've been trying to get his name out of my house for 10 years. This nigga moved. And guess why he moved out? <laughs> he moved out. He moved out. I was like, yo, now that you got that money, you want to put some on the bills? Bills. Nigga, hell no, nah, nigga. He left. Left with his PPP money. <laughs> I ain't seen him since. Just being honest. Like, mm-hmm. I've I, I seen who we are. I want to reward the good ones. Like, I, like, like, Eric, you are, you are, you've done it, everything right. You haven't cheated the process. Dog, I was, to me, I, I'm scrolling his, his discography. I was scrolling for, fast, by the way. I was scrolling for three minutes. And it was like, and I still wasn't done. Still going. That means he put in the work. So that way, so now he don't have to go 
do shows for fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Like he like I do it when I want it. Yeah, because the, the publishing, the records I made, I, I saw I make my my money from the publishing that checks that come in from you know the records I made. Some some be um, heavier than others. Yeah, but but I if I add it all together, it's like with all the albums is seventy two million albums records. Wow, albums that was sold. So all those projects that I'm on. But those are pieces of money I get from the yeah. projects. So from all from all the way down to the fifty cents to the M and M to the Ludacris's to the Red and Meth to any rapper that was at that time I produced them all. Mm. From R and B from D'Angelo, Chico DeBarge, Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, In Vogue, from from uh, Angie Stone to Brownstone to it don't matter who they were. Yeah. Nobody didn't come out and didn't call my phone. I just again, we don't have no phones or no things, so nobody don't know anything. Yeah. So and me, I don't care. I'm, I'm when the like I'm humble to a fault. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking now because I'm in an interview. I, I, but I was about but, to ask but you, but like, why don't you talk? You never had people. They're gonna look at Jermaine Dupri now. He argues because he he don't <laughs> like to be underrated. But he's one people. What you what? So so that you could. But me, but um, I I'll let you know about it. You know, if if I had to though, but you know, um. Met the man's one two say Eric man you um you saved me because even though I came from Wu Tang after Wu Tang whatever brother Meth came you know yeah that that was that was to give him another life and then, the, then the movies came and then look at him he, he's on power yeah you know he's like you know him and Mary is starring in power had right. a hit in like ninety three ninety four like come on yeah, man like sir yeah thank you for the situations you know thank you for you know um I remember when when I was I went to Teddy I was doing Black Street. Uh, this booty call when they the first when they first came and, and the record call nice night uh, Dave Hollister was yeah he was a, a signed singer yeah like not signed to him he was a hired singer oh wow but before that you go it was two million records so he like, was work for hire work for hire I said I said listen I'm gonna give you I'm gonna get you a brand new navigator I'm gonna give you seventy five grand you just come with me real quick yeah so then I took Dave Hollister you know and um well, like why don't you why don't like so you know like when you in our world it's frustrating but even with Jermaine I had to tell him you gotta it's like you have to do this it's like I I've made I have a clip going viral where I'm like don't be humble and people are like mad but I'm like the humble ones always get looked over right. so when I'm talking to you yesterday I was like, your best friend yesterday that's why yeah, exactly that's why I'm <laughs> exactly because you know, I'm I'm trying to do a document Dre did the defiant one yeah so I'm trying to do one now nah too, you bro, no no, bro, no, no bro, I want you to help you because yeah. I want you to understand bro I, I would from, love that from from I Red Man I'm for real no nah, because yeah. from Red Man to to Keith Murray to Def Squad to Yo shit like to the records you produce it's like why don't nobody know that. You had all these people signed to you. You was like puff before puff, right? And it was like, but it was. I don't. Was it not something that you need to celebrate? Is it like? It wasn't like it is now. Got you. It was like you know the records just came out and just what you did. I just was making deals with all these labels, and then I was you know just going around just doing what I love you know at the time. And Russell was my friend who believed in what I was doing. Mm. Russell was like, you know, and then at one time. There was nothing on Def Jam that wasn't passed by me. Yeah. Hello, Cool J, Warren G, J C, mm -hmm. whatever that was on Def Jam too, that eventually came to me too. Mm. So, but um my best years was moving to Atlanta, Georgia in, I, I, in ninety-three. I gotta say something. Uh, OG told me you cannot mention Atlanta history and not talk about Eric Sermon. And when they said that, the first thing I thought to myself was the damn rim shop. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I came to Atlanta in ninety one. Like his rim shop was like a Nash, a, a, a monument for the whole city. He had a, it was a studio or something like that. Like, yeah, yeah, the rim, it, yeah. so you knew Eric Summer had a rim shop, but it was really kind of like it was like the first trap, like yeah. not well, like yo, the music trap. Not, yeah, no, yeah. It was. I used to go in my back of my shop. I would see Jagged Edge, Goody Mob, One Twelve, um, uh, Usher, um, David Banner. It would be like a wow. bunch of people that wasn't nobody yet. Yeah, that wanted to get on, thinking I'm gonna produce them. And then the freaknik came, shocked the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Changed everything. Uh, you know, this is my first time being here. I'm like, what is this? What is you this? <laughs> so then the next the Olympics came and I had Shaq, Jalen Rose, and Chris Webber come through the, the shop. And that was really with the city. Yeah. 
So, um, but a guy named Jose Williams. Now I know who he is. Now. I know he I is know too. Him then, yeah, he was next door to me. Mm. He was like, "Hey, hey, hey, New Yorker. Um, <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm gonna feed the homeless. What, what's, uh, can you give me a little something." So I'm like, "Yo, give Jose Williams what he wants." So down by Gladys Knight, yeah, restaurant, that yeah. block before that, yeah, mm-hmm. the homeless was there. Yeah, so these. They still there. Yep. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. still there. Yeah, that's it can't be. No, no way. No, no. Yeah, Behind Gladys spot. Chicken, Gladys yeah. Nights where it was. There's no way. That's where all the homeless people in the city yeah. are. Yeah. Right there in that little so area. Well, well, we fed them. And uh, and we fed them for years until the freak Nick ended. What was it 98? 98, last, last year. When the, when the mayor was uh, telling people we can't go to the city and he stopped. He messed it all up when they <laughs> had to move the traffic going back on to <laughs> 20 or whatever. I'm like, yeah. this is crazy. And Bill and I thought Bill was cool too at one time. But um, he's about Bill Campbell, by the way. If you yeah, know Bill Campbell, uh, that was my best time being in this place because they really they embraced me. Like when my songs came on, like Atlanta's own Eric Sermon. I'm like, dude, I'm not even from here, but they doing that on the intro. So it's Hot 97 with Lulu Chris, Chris Lover Lover, yeah, you know, and Poon Daddy, yeah, they were there, and then Greg Street on 103. So that right there really changed my landscape because they didn't have to do that yeah. for me. You know, like Dallas Austin have to let me come to DARP. You know what I'm saying? I like get in there, I see TLC. I'm a fan still, you yeah. know. No matter what, I'm a fan of people still now. Yeah. I like, I'm, you and being, you a fan. Yeah, no for sure. No matter what you are, because you celebrities, you're still a fan. Yep. You, you like. So I saw TLC in there, and they had this group called Illegal. These are two young rappers. Of course I remember Illegal. Like, so <laughs> so um, they were like, hey, Uncle E. So that Uncle E got me to, to inside that inside that room mm. with Lisa. Mm. So I lived with her for like three months in the beginning. And um, and then, because I didn't have nothing. I had like a thousand dollars in American Express card mm. when I came. So I was like kind of like playing it off. Like I wasn't lying. I just didn't really have nothing. Yeah. You know, um, from moving here. Yeah. And then I got the call from Shaq. Mm. And no, Puffy first. Yeah. Who's the man soundtrack? Yep. It was seventy five hundred dollars, and then Shaq called me for his album, mm. and I did Shaq's first album. Oh, you, oh, I didn't know that either. That's crazy. Damn, Ray, how you? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, but here's the <laughs> thing, though. Can I tell you <laughs> something? I don't think people understand. How, like, I was at home last night, and I was like, "Bro," so like, I know I was interviewing. I'm like, I'm like, fuck this motherfucker, like eighty seven, and then he signed this person. I'm like, and even now, you like unvoke. I'm like, why did I say this to everybody? I'm like, you gotta be loud. And you got to be loud because the kids don't know, but we can't get mad that they don't know if we don't I don't care them. about them. I want them to know. Yeah. yeah I that's want them to know. That's you. That's, yeah. that's, I mean, as, hey, man, if, if, if they do, that's cool. As long as, like I said, for, I just respect the fact that y'all like the records. No, that's love the records. As, as a producer, yeah. we want y'all just to be like, yo, that record <laughs> So you see crazy. yourself more as a producer than an artist. Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> and I would rather ch- I would change that in a jiffy if I have to go out there and rap. <laughs> Jiffy. And be l- lisping and all type of shit like that. <laughs> and by the way, Tamir, we going to the we going to one of the shows. I don't know if it's the September one the, um, the, at the Garden. I don't know where we going because I want to see it. Because number one, I'm a fan. Like I'm a fan. I just feel like people should know, and I feel like we're lacking. I feel like yeah. the biggest problem hip hop is having with everything we're having right now, with it being 2023 and not having one number one song, number one n- not one number yeah. one album. The yeah. problem is, is that people like you aren't in the room. Mm. And to me, like Quincy Jones did Thriller at 50. Hip hop is the only I, game that yo, ages I use you. that same thing. It ages at you. 50. But I'm like, imagine, like, at imagine, 50. imagine, Bro. come on, Bro. Like, imagine a young dude, like a little baby or somebody in the room with the you. Yes. Even if it's just for you to be able to say, try this. That's value there. These guys don't have that. And I think hip hop is suffering now because beat packs. And I'm like, the producers All still want to produce. You yeah. like you still at this point, like I'm a producer. Yeah. Like, imagine you in a room with someone young coming up and you giving them the game. Mm-hmm. But here's the problem. The labels don't want you in a room with them. No. The reason why is because you're gonna start asking them questions about the business, because that's what the OG does. Nah. Yo, you got this together, make sure you have this. And they don't want you that's in a room. That's why we're not here. That's why Come they all man. Before they they got fired before they was really over yep. a lot of them. Yep. Because of the fact that I can manipulate you with that three sixty. Yep. Because I'm gonna give you two million dollars. Yep. What can they in turn not taking that two million dollars? Nobody. They're Even though it. they know they they're gonna own the likeness. 
but they don't care about the the, the publishing, the management. They want the upfront money. Yep. And again, if you're too smart to know about that, I don't want you with me. I don't want you around. Right. Around I don't want you me. telling me what am I doing. Right. I don't like I'm Tamara. I say they try to get the black man, the black father out the house. That's how can you take advantage of the family if the black father is there? You can't go to that conversation because then you're going to start a whole big thing about that. That's this is what the whole thing is about from slavery too, about about the black man being disrespected in front of the woman before they can see it. This is starts from the door. And then you keep going for now to where, like, when black people used to talk about love, they had to stop the love being talked about. So we have to change the narrative of love and change it someplace else. Mm -hmm. We like rap, but we don't want this teaching rap. So I'm going to play the most disgusting rap there is. Yes. So I'm going to play hardcore gangster rap music. Yes. I'd rather beep the curses out than to play regular rap music. Yep. Then I'm going to take all the other stuff with the bitches and the Miami <laughs> stuff and bring that into in here, too. So yep. every everything that they did was to make sure that they make it so it's be as ignorant as possible so we can be how we are at this state right now. This is all planned. This ain't nothing that, that this came of. This has been planned from the door. They knew that if we, rap music would fill the jails up, rap music would, 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 would have these people, oh, rap music would make sure that they, um, they put the culture in this situation and put black folks in this situation and make sure that we we make males uh we're going to we're going to feminize them too. Oh, mm. you know, start on the sassy yeah, so, man. So, but, 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 but but again, <laughs> but this is how How do we fix this moving forward? I, this is what we trying to That's what we doing right now. Possible, kind of, but we supposed to only I, we I, got. I'm saying we can fix it. We will fix it, but we have to have the uncomfortable conversations and we have to talk. They don't want us talk. That's why I'm glad uh Eric is here because this is this is what this whole shit is about. Like I, f I love what Nori is doing, but Nori is like, you got to have this much time in the game to come on my show. So then you ignoring the whole like. Imagine how much value it is sitting at the table with Nori and him telling you, "Don't do that." Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna tell you a story. Eric. I was I was trying to sign this artist. This is the importance of black people. I'm trying to sign this artist in Baltimore. He's a little street dude. I walk in the studio. It's guns. As many everybody you see in this room has a gun on their lap. Like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you know me, Eric. I'm like, first I pull his manager to the side. Manager to the side. I'm like, hey, bro, are we in some kind of war, or danger, or something? Like, why everybody got guns? He was like, nah. You know, we just in the hood. We got to protect ourselves. So I'm like, all right, cool. So now I'm sitting with the artist, and I'm like, yo, bro, like, what's the plan? Like, what you want to do? He said, I want to be big. I said, Jay Z big? And he was like, hell yeah. I said, first piece of advice: guns scare away the money. And if you want to get that big, I'm not saying don't have guns around, but have them away. Because when people walk in the room and see all these guns, niggas is going to be like me. Like, hold on, what the fuck going on? Mm. Little niggas said like this to all these people, hey, mm, everybody put their gun away, and it was normal. Mm -hmm. That's some shit that I can do in the room because yeah. I'm not afraid of them. Right. I'm yeah. one of y'all. Right. I came from where y'all came from. Like, Eric, you are the goal, bro. Just that one little thing you told them. Yes. It was something that they didn't know about. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And they not even thinking. They that's thinking guns is cool. Like, answer your question. What he's saying, that conversation will, will have some type of impact of it. And then we need more of us to do it. Yes. We need more people to follow suit. Like, if they follow suit, listen to something that's negative. Yeah. You know, we need I like to blame the parents. Hmm? Huh? I like to blame the parents. <laughs> I think that, see, I don't got kids, so I could do that. <laughs> um, I think that, well, a few factors go into this. Because before, back in the day, there was only one TV, there was only one radio, so everybody was forced to listen to the same music. Now kids could go in a room, listen to whatever they want to. They aren't learning classics. They aren't waking up, so they don't have that respect. If we, if we tell our kids, if y'all... I just want y'all to talk to y'all kids more. I think people are letting the internet and teachers raise their kids because parents are tired. They got to work, come home, do stuff. I get it. But they need to have more in-depth conversations with their kids. I just told the conversation that my generation dropped the ball. We wasn't prepared for the internet. And what happened mm. was we gave our kids a cell phone and an iPad, and that raised the children. And, then no, and so that part of it, we dropped the ball. My parents is the last person that whipped the kids and was able to have attention to govern and look at a child and be able to tell a child yay and nay. But, so, I don't, you're right about that. The fact that the, the, the internet came into play mm -hmm. and we wasn't prepared for that. And then after this generation, y'all, the, the new ones who are 30 years old, the kids, now their kids don't, they're not scared of nothing. They don't believe in the Bible. They, they don't, don't believe in God. They don't respect nobody. So, 
we they really in trouble. They don't even believe in so, genders. So, so how do we? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so try to try to try to they fix where we at. Them. Like we are in the, like I said for a minute. Is again, just talking right now is. I don't want to get frustrated for what can't do nothing. But look how sad this sounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we're in a, sounds like a sad stuff. bad place. And so er- and we have no leadership. That's why we're starting I the know. conversation. We have no leadership. We're not. No, they didn't want me in the room. So guess what I had to do? Talk on the mic. Send my messages to the room. Cause y'all don't want me in the room telling these young dudes what to do. I got yeah. friends now. Be like, yo, Eric, yo, you saying too much? They would think I'm gonna get assassinated. Right. They would think that somebody going to come and kill Ray Daniels. That's a, they really feel like that. Th- I'm, I won't make this up. They really be like, yo, you got to keep quiet. You can't tell somebody something. Like you think that they're gonna really pay attention to us and be like. You know what? Let's stop that because you see, you see movies and you see what happens to certain people who are given too much information. You know, did they put a stop to you? Mm-hmm. But nah, you got to be able to say something and hopefully it is spark. Like Tupac said, I might not be the one to do it, but I might be the one to spark, spark the brain for somebody. Yes. That's what we're trying to do. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Spark the whole that. generation. That's great. Shout out to New Face in the building. New Face is everywhere. Yeah. Favorite person in Atlanta. I don't. I, I say. Kind of sore. That's what I say. By the way, he was ahead of his time. Because yeah. there was a point in time where we didn't want autographs. We didn't want pictures. We didn't want that. And I feel like now, like like 2023, everybody wishes they took more pictures. Yeah. Everybody wishes they had more. Like, damn, remember that shit? I, I wish I had. I know Puff wish he had the Big Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know he does. I know he does. Just for the sake of it. Yeah. You got one? Yeah, of course, of course oh, wow. we do. God damn, New Face. Yeah. That's New Face. If, if, if New Face wasn't there, it didn't happen. That's what I like. I'm like, man. I was like, <laughs> but yeah, so we got New Face out. But yeah, I just like I just feel like, you know, we just got to find a way to talk. I feel like you have to be louder. I feel like we can hear the concern. Mm-hmm. When you talk, I hear it. I hear a man that cares. Mm-hmm. Some niggas talk and you get, you be like, this nigga's trying to finesse me. Mm-hmm. You try to, like, it would tell you something, them blood. What you need to be doing? You need to be over here. Do it. It's like, you trying to yeah. finesse me. But you actually care and you do this. Yeah, but you care, you care too. I do. Yeah, I'm gonna put it, I want to put it on, on me because I'm here. But, again, when I told you yesterday, mm-hmm. I was keeping it 100. I reacted the same way when you saw me, how I saw you. Yeah, I'm like, exactly. Oh shit, yo. Exactly. You know, exactly. Again, because I told my, to told my, my, my fam, I'm like, yo, Ray ain't them. He don't talk about that same stuff that people are talk talking about. I have a 30 year old nephew say he was watching a certain podcast, and he says, I'm gonna give this shit a, sh- a shot. He said the first half an hour they were talking about money and diamonds and jewelry, and he turned it. He's 30. He wanted to hear something that could relate to him, about him mm-hmm. and his first and him being married at thirty with a four year old kid. And how I'm gonna make it? Yep. Just give me something else besides the regular. We don't got Team Summit no more. You remember mm. Team Summit? Is? Yes, that's a good one. Mm. We don't got no Team Summit. Like we only got a Team Summit. <laughs> they be able to say, "Okay, kids, you know," <laughs> and, and give a little, you know. Uh, um, some act right. Anything to we show knew we was on Team Summit. You had to sit down on the floor. Everybody something. be quiet. Let the host talk. Something about the world. Anything yeah. that got something to do that's positive. We don't have <laughs> none of that. And the kids don't give two shits if it is a, something that's out there. They wouldn't watch it anyway. So I got a question for you. If you, st- if you took over a record label right now. Oh, I'm making all positive music. Mm. Uh, I'm, uh, and that's my goal as we speak right now that I talk to the lawyer yeah. and talk about the podcast and about having the label to be able to, 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 to usher in. Right now, I'm doing yay right now. Yeah. And and our whole goal is try to push music forward. Mm. And, and um, f- uh, in a way to where, like, okay, we know you, you haven't heard us or seen that you haven't heard a seen before. It's how Ray Daniels is going to do it. Yeah. It's going to make it different. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because there ain't mm-hmm. nothing new under the sun. So we could find a way to be able to move it forward, meaning that bring the conversation back. Yeah. You know, and then you said, too, bring um, lyricism back. And then um, content. And, and as far as when I mean that conversation, meaning that um, concepts. Yep. That means the chorus means what the verse says. Mm. These two things match. Yes. It doesn't. 
what we hear now is oh, like you say whatever, <laughs> and then the chorus is the same. There's a song out right now with yeah. no words on it. It's just bop, 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 bop. Look, like the whole time, like Bro. there's not even words in music no more. Like all the records really that don't. we know, they, really don't. they all got concepts. Yes, and we remember them. It's a hard knock you know? life we're, we're, for everything us. We don't, I remember all the big songs we know too. It doesn't matter what it is. Even Al Green was like the way he spoke, like. Something's going on. Somebody's on the phone. It's three o'clock in the morning. Somebody she can make it right. Now we know what that means. Oh he wow! Like this, but in the nowadays he'd be like, "Yo, bitch, call me over. <laughs> I'm going to get the. Uh, she want. She want to give me some pussy." And boom, 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 whatever. Yeah, Al Green said again. She on the phone talking about it's three o'clock. I can make it right. Come over. I Evelyn, Champ- Evelyn Champagne, can you make my love come down? She didn't say, oh, you make, I'm coming. Right, yeah. right, <laughs> right. It's no creativity. <laughs> the, the creativity of writing the record so it can be a certain way. Just thinking to be creative on the situation. That's all we're trying to even ask. And all we want is like this and that to be able to say, even back then we had, you know, this music and we had that. Now we only got this. Yeah. We at least have a little. It's very one sided. Exactly. Very one sided. But I, I, for, so, by the way, that was genius. I, I never listened to like thought about the lyrics and how it doesn't re- relate to today, mm. and that's that's incredible. So, if you were you was recently working with Dr. Dre, mm. how was that? It was one of the dopest experiences I ha- I had, like far as because um, to be recorded by somebody else, like far as me and that. You know, I went on his direction on how to make the song, oh, even wow. though like if um, you know, you know what you're doing. Yeah. But he he doesn't write. Yeah. Like as far as write records. Yeah. There's like a team of people in there, and we all vibe, and then he does the cadence of how it should go, like and then we put words to it. Yeah. And then we do each two bars like that till the 16 is done. But it was the most incredible experience I ever had in my life. And I, I did everything. And you, and you still session, let Dr. Dre produce you? Because that's what how they worked. Oh. Yes. So while he was doing what he's I'm like, yo, I'll, I'll rap if you can do, if I can do it how you doing it. Mm. Because I didn't rhyme. I, I The first three records he, that I did was all him. Yeah. And he said, hey, you ain't going to rhyme? I'm like, nah, I ain't going to rap. You just go, I'm just going to hit the produce for you. So by the fourth record, I heard a beat. And I'm like, you know what? I want to rhyme on that. He said, yeah. for real? like, yo. Eric's gonna rhyme. <laughs> so Eric's I'm like, so I want to do it how you doing it with your crew. Yeah. So that was the dopest experience ever, and we would never hear it. That's a sad. Part. <laughs> how are you gonna tease us like that? Maybe. <laughs> but, 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 it's a, but, but but you know maybe. what I told you. I know, yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like we would never hear it until Dre says it's time. Right. And I'm he's so super rich right now, so he might not say that anytime soon. He said, I saw an interview, he said, he said, this is the happiest I've ever, yeah. this is the freest I've ever been. By the way, I always say to people, I'm like, where to go? Like, Eric, you are the goal. If you are an up-and-coming rapper, Eric Sermon is the goal. He's someone who's been in the game 36, 37 years. He's made hits. He's made lots of money. He's still relevant, and he can still go make money off his name. And if he wanted to just live off of his work, he could do that, too. Yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal. Because what people don't understand yeah. is that you're going to spend the money. Yep. Like, you, you made $10 million last yep. year. You yep. ain't spending like yep. you was making a million. You yep. spending like you're making 10 Not knowing next year you might make three. But you need, but now you need 10 That 10 ain't coming in every year, yeah. bro. But one thing about those, those two, when you did all that in that 53, now I don't have to worry about how expensive it is to be hoeing. Like I was hoeing. Like, uh, Atlanta? <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> Let's get to it. It's something about Atlanta yeah, instead of men. Yo, Atlanta's like men too. I, you know, I, yo, I never listen. I come from New York, man. This is 90, 93. My first, I came in here at the end of ninety two, <laughs> about the ball drop, right? Yep. The highways with cars, all black women on the highway. Yes. Right. I'm in the AU. Yeah. All black colleges. At, Atlanta right? University Center. Everything in here was just black, right? The count of women in 1993 was 20 to one. Oh, that's OD. I thought it was bad. Now that's OD. No, no. So, 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 that's so, 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 right now that what you ludicrous said in one of the records, they it's not made up, and that was early 2000 for him or 99 or whatever. 20 to one. When I wrote down P Street, that sign that says the 
the population, it was 1.6 million people when I was here. Yep. Now it's about what six, seven, about five, five, five six million. Yep. So again, it wasn't as packed. It was all women, and what I mean that every night, <laughs> it was a, it was the, uh, uh, the two, the Nikki's one, Nikki's two, Mag City, Gentlemen's Club. I learned, a, I learned a lot of the big one where the ball players went to. Yep. Right? Because I don't know about that. The the old 112. And then it, missed, then it came to Buckhead and it was the Diamonds and Pearls yep. side by side. Me, Bobby Brown. That just sounded like a bad call. I love it. It's like, it's like we want to stop and say, hold on. Bobby Brown story. We want to hear Bobby Brown story. <laughs> Once he said Bobby Brown, I was like, oh, that tells I mean, you what type of night you the had. The city. <laughs> and, and then it was like a situation where like, you did what you wanted to do. Sometimes you would come in there and there'd be women that be sitting there and be like, oh, yeah, my homeboy told me to come in here with you. You're like that, whatever. Like, and it was like, it was Sodom and Gomorrah then. Like, <laughs> no, no, for real. It was bad. It was, Atlanta was bad. Like, bad. And I was a new kid, too, like, from New York. You know how that thing, New York. Yeah. Yeah. You and they love that accent. You know, oh, whatever. God. It was Bad. <laughs> <laughs> How bad was so it? So <laughs> then, now I, I got my industry money in the down south place. So I got a house in Swanee, someplace in Alpharetta. I'm over here on H.C. Homes and, and Cascade. I'm, I'm, I got condo. I'm wilding. I got <laughs> cars everywhere. But I mean, this in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know? And you got the rim That's shop. Cool. You got this the rim so, shop so going and, up. And then the, made the, it even worse. The Platinum House Club. You know where my boy Vonstam had, and um, and it was like again we OD'd until again I left in '98 when the Freaknik <laughs> came, and then I went back home in '99. I was saved. Lucky I was saved. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what was the difference? <laughs> what when was you the say difference? saved, you mean like you went to church? And saved, <laughs> no, I got saved from being here. Like I, oh, I, like <laughs> they came and got you. Okay, so let me say. I'll say. So there's two things I gotta say. Two observations I gotta say. You just gave me. So here's one. When the women are nice to you, it makes you want to spend money. Atlanta women Noted. are very friendly, very nice. Very friendly. New York chicks will tell you, nicer. fuck yeah. you, shut the fuck up. You ain't nobody. So you don't want to spend no nice. money on her. Oh, okay. yeah, you know what? I forgot she wasn't, you wouldn't know. You ain't from here. You're right. right. There's, it's a different type of southern hospitality was real, man. Still it is. Real. It was just nice. And like, you yeah, know, and that's shocking like, to New Yorkers. So we, yeah, it was it was like, a different thing, you know. He had to come back and get his. He had to come back and reset his life. <laughs> he had to go back to New York and be like, "Hello, yeah. fuck you, fuck you too." It feels good to be home. You know, you're in Atlanta. Everybody nice. Everywhere you go, they nice. You know what happened to me when I came back here for a while and I went back to New York? I made the mistake of speaking to people in the elevator, and they looking at me like, "Bitch, I don't know you." And I was like, oh, "I'm not in Atlanta no more. Why mm-hmm. am I talking to people in the elevator?" That's why I don't claim New York. Mm-hmm. Because I moved to Atlanta when I was 11, 12, and I remember I was like, New York, New York, New York. And then I went back to visit my cousins, you know, and then New York. Well, New York, y'all some motherfuckers, man. I go see my cousins, right? Mind you, I've been in Atlanta. New York, New York. And I go see my cousin. I'm like, what's up, man? New York. Man, get your country, country ass, ass out of you. Candy laid, eat, candy laid. Because I, I was like, you know, we don't have stores, you know, because it's like, y'all don't have stores. What do y'all do? I'm like, we go to the candy lady. Candy lady. And he's like, why you say candy lady like that? I'm right. like, I don't know. I didn't realize I said it. You old country ass nigga. I came back to Atlanta like, man, fuck them, man. <laughs> fuck all of them. I'm one of y'all now. Yeah. And they open open arms. New Yorkers no, will mind yeah. you. I, was, I didn't know what tennis shoes was. I thought it was actually a tennis shoe. You know, like a, <laughs> you play tennis in, you know, but that's what they call sneakers, you know. And pop with soda. And I was like, you know, again, because I, I was here when I was 14 visiting my, my, my auntie. She was in Vine City. Now, Vine City got changed when the Olympics came. They knocked all that down. Yeah. And my uncle lived in Techwood. That was in back of my yep. rim shop. Techwood was also knocked down. And they rebuilt yep. that, too. So when I was 14, I was in the hoods anyway. Mm-hmm. Then I went to, when I got here, I went to Bank, Bankhead, whatever. And I went over there. I'm like, damn, y'all niggas don't go downtown? <laughs> like, you know, we stay right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then the old national dudes, too, they had like a, Right down old national. old national, they stayed over there too. We didn't leave old national, so this is where I was old at. Man. I only knew Atlanta part, you know. But I met them people, and they were like, "Yeah, we don't come on that side." So <laughs> I stayed here, bougie. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, so Billboard recently 
um, may at least hey, man, you gotta come to the show more. <laughs> you just gotta come talk <laughs> shit more, bro. Um, Billboard recently um, released the top fifty greatest rap groups of all time. EPMD came in at twenty six. Mm. Do you think that's a fair number? I don't care about it. I'm, it's like he said, man. If, if, if they acknowledge me, I'm fine with it. But I, I know who I am. And the ones who didn't make the list too, they know who they are too. Because I, 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 I bet you it was no black dude that made that list. Oh no, but that was voting. Oh, oh, that made it. That's oh, what Benzino said. Started. Benzino yeah. said, "Who was in the room? Who it is? Yeah. Who was in the room? Huh? All right. They they always put one. You gotta you gotta have your neighborhood black person in the room. Oh, he yeah. was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but but what usually I'm usually is is not. Who, who did that billboard? Yes. Okay, because again, the the, the um, Rolling Stone magazine, those people go too. Was mm-hmm. or th- they wasn't us. So that's right. Well, you said that. So because everybody right. thought it was going to be because it's always not us. There's I, a question I, I, I like to ask New Yorkers when they come in, mm-hmm. and we never had. All right, so which borough do you think produced the most stars? Well, are we just doing rap stars? Or? Superstars and stars. Hip hop. You like to include movie stars. No, 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 no. I like to say superstars because there's a difference between Run DMC and Mob Deep. They both for the shit. But Queens got a lot of rappers, man. Long Island does. I didn't realize Long Island yeah. has a lot of rappers. Public Enemy. No, 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 if Long Island's not in the hip hop, then the hip hop is not doesn't look colorful neither. Not because I'm from there, but just because again, Rock him, Public Enemy, EPMD, Bismarck, Key, Kane, Tribe Called Quest. Um, did that I sold, not try. Yeah, th- yeah, okay. You know, um, you know, this is again. You got Myra Carey, Ashanti, Billy Joe. These are you know as far as music part of whatever. But Brooklyn and, and Queens has a tie as far as the most influential and most stars of rap music is Brooklyn or Queens. I think it's Queens. Yeah, Queens. Brooklyn got just most. got the Giants. Brooklyn got yeah. the but two Giants. Gi- Jay Z and Big. Yeah. But it's a like, lot of them though. Yeah. You know what's crazy? Because if you would have asked me this before we had this show, I would have said probably the Bronx and Brooklyn. They don't. No. But now that Jack Dan has entered everyone's life, we look Queens. at Queens as a different. It's Queens. <laughs> in a different light. It's Queens. 50 there. Cent, yeah. Run DMC, and, 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 LL Cool J. He's from Queens. He's from the hardest part of Queens, which is the 40s, where he's. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. You just. Okay. So you. I thought you was from, you was from um, that side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cousin. I want to. I want to. I want. We're gonna talk about that later. All right. I want to hear the fu- <laughs> niggas just said basically like. Yeah, he was like, no, nah, I ain't from forty. I ain't from forty. No, no, but I'm. I'm I was giving. The, I'm saying because that is one of the roughest parts of Queens. Mm-hmm. No, no. So I want to ask you a question. I just have to ask this. Give me your top five hip hop oh, groups. Now you, now you do the same thing with everybody. That's hip hop group. You. I want your. You were in one of the greatest groups in hip hop history, not EPMD. Give me your five, not EPMD. Run DMC. Okay. Groups. Groups. I'm, I'm, it's one I just, uh, new face. It's one he got to say. I'm just hoping he say it. That's what I'm thinking. Outcast. Okay, I'm good now. I okay, I'm that's good now. We Ray st- was waiting for. <laughs> I'm like, it's one he got to say. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't understand why people don't acknowledge that. No, that's it. I don't either. This is, you, you have Raise to, on a personal a mission person to make sure people acknowledge That consistency, it. they didn't do this. They did this. That's consistency. It's a big difference for somebody who does this and then does this. Mm-hmm. this you got to give it to somebody who does this and just climb. Then I'm going to go to 10 million records from a platinum record. Crazy. And had love the entire time from everybody. So the everybody, time. so everybody that was on the first album was there for the last album. Mm-hmm. Not like you know, people like man, like uh, it's people that's like I like Ye, but I don't fuck. I fuck with early Ye. Like Outkast, you fuck with them. If Boy, you was there yeah. for Southern playlists of Cadillac mm-hmm. Funky Music, you was there for the Speaker Box Love Below. Yeah, it, it's just no doubt about it. So Outkast, uh, yeah. Run DMC. Yeah, but see, you can't call Eric B. Rock him a group because. They were, I wouldn't call them a group anyway. They can't call it that. You know, um. <laughs> Mob Deep. Okay. Okay. Queens. Queens, Queens gets a nod. Queens is like, okay, we got one. <laughs> on the board. Oh, man. This is crazy. This, I mean, this. 
ain't that many groups like Wu-Tang. that. Wu-Tang. Oh, that's what I oh, was yeah, waiting Wu-Tang. on. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I was duh. waiting on. Wu-Tang. My bad. Because we had the outcast yeah. thing going on. For a quick second, That's why I that thought you, before. but then I should have knew yeah. Ray was waiting yeah. for yeah. I knew, yeah. I knew I Wu-Tang. Was Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang Clan is one of the best groups of all time. Period. Hands down. But I got to give it to um, the boy from Texas. UGK? You have to. You got to. See, on, that's why I look. On consistency of what they was able to do, you don't know one person who don't love them. Period. Incredible. So, I, and I'm a, you got to give it to me. I'm, I'm a, a producer. Yes. So, coming from the rap side, I people be like, hey, you ain't naming these, you know, the other, I'm like, the locks, I'm, I understand that part. I'm coming for us. Just production and watching the consistency of somebody who's made an impact soul records and was able to and be loved like that. And people that want to do records with them and be talked about like that. You got to put UGK in that conversation. Pimp as C, as four. Now, number five. Who's number five? NWA. Oh, so my M- God. My, I <laughs> <that bad. laughs> Trial Conquest. NWA. Public Enemy. But, oh, Lord Jesus Christ. You get nobody from Long Island in there. We get on Long no, Island no, but, in there. But, but I'm saying the fact that I'm going because, again, you can't really do that five like that because you know you got to do P. You know you got to do NWA. You know you got to you know you try what Quest is up there. You Daylight is up there. You, it's a bunch of them. But I came to five, you know, I'm only coming. I gave what I had my four. That's, I'm standing by that. <laughs> I was going to say, you can let the five fight. Let the five fight. Let them fight for that. But five. NWA was fantastic. Producers, because you're a producer. Give me a top five hip-hop producers. Tell you, Riley. Dr. Dre, uh, Quincy Jones. Mm. <laughs> you know, I talk about Molly Mall. Mm. Nobody's ever said that. That's a good one. I love that you said Molly Mall. You got, you got to do. Everybody rock him. Is this Marquis? Is L O Cool J? Is Lords the Underground? You got to. You got one the, more the, spot. The sound that he did. The, was it, that was it for me? Um, That's five. Who was the other one? <laughs> Tim Pharrell, right, Swiss. We got people outside. Yeah, Premier. Yeah. Okay, Primo. Primo is. I would say yeah. Premier. He oh, hard. My bad. Yeah, it's Primo. Easy Mo B was Mo hard. B too. He, yeah, you. You're right. The Biggie Small stuff was incredible. But this just the biggie as a sample. With the one Tupac record and the Lost Boys. You know, you know, you it's not it's not a it's not a he's ill, but more work. You know, you know how I just producers? I just producers by yeah. how good they made people in the room because they was in the room. Right. Like some people, you know, like when you work with certain people, like Pharrell bought out something different in, in Snoop. Like he could have went the okay, you know what I'm saying? He, yeah, he, uh, he, 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 he gave when he gave him beautiful, he gave him job. It yeah. was like, damn, we ain't heard Snoop like that, and it still worked. Timberland, like that too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, Timberland, like yeah. when you when like I was listening to one in mi- one in a million on the way to the office today, and I'm like, if this record dropped twenty what twenty nine years later, yeah. shit will still be a smash. Right. So for me, I just but the like, flavor of my R and B, I gave it to Teddy. Yeah, and I gave it to Quincy for sure. Because of off the wall and thriller, you know. So and, and by the way, Teddy Riley created that. a genre. Yeah. So so that so those two. And then when in the hip hop world, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say Dre because the NWA and the Chronic changed the landscape sonically. Yes. What we ever heard in life history. Yes. Of something that sound that good. And then you know Primo, as far as just the work he did on everybody, um, the everybody was benefited from one of his records for him to be able to have that. Same technique and style and still win. I, I, know, I know this is pressure, but I got to ask you because I feel like this is what we do. If there are five new younger artists that you will want to work with, do you have five that you will want to work with? I wish Slugger was still here. Slugger. Who's Slugger? Mm. He's in jail right Thugger. now. Thugger. Oh. Okay, so I was say I thought you said Slugger, but I was like, he probably I did do, oh. the nickname to call him both. So. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So Thug. This is me. I'm like he anybody can help. As far as melody and choruses, he set the tone 
Crazy. Like, he was genius at what he was able to do. Period. Um, <laughs> I ain't got nothing for you, man. No, no, no. I, I, I do. I just I can't think right now. But I would love to see you with Kendrick. I, yeah, but that's not a newbie to me. I, I, J. Cole and Kendrick were my favorite artists. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, but I don't see them as that. I'm okay. talking about as far as just the ones that's influential. Like that guy, Triple X, that died. Yeah. I, I wish I could. But Juice World. Mm-hmm. Those guys was rappers. Nobody know th- know that part about them. MCs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I know them boys can rhyme for real. Yeah. The fact that they came out with what they came out with. So, but, um, oh, the oh yeah. The, <laughs> what are we gonna okay. say? Is it a girl? We're we gonna say. You know what? <laughs> hey. Um, Somebody gotta do it. Um, Use the people's app. What's is it Lotto? Yes. Lotto. Yeah. Lotto. Um, See, a, gr- a girl got called. By the way, Lotto, I could, I could, I could set that up. Yeah, like, I, I could set that up. This is, I mean, I'm My saying boy. because again, I, I had Sweetie with me in in, in California with Dre. So, 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 so I, I really, I really did the young girl. So, but um, yeah, I mean, this is, I think that again, if the movement is moving forward. Mm-hmm. To something that where each one of them get the responsibility. Me and Simone said, as an artist, we are responsible for telling somebody something in a song. That's our responsibility as an artist mm-hmm. to give them something to, for them to, um, to look at mm-hmm. and, and be able to give them some type of inspiration or some knowledge or some type of conversation that tells them something positive. Mm-hmm. So I just hope that somebody does that and and uh and and don't see that you have to do this. You don't have to do this. You don't mm-hmm. have to follow. You could still win. Yeah. If Drake right now switched the whole landscape and start talking about math problems, the whole industry would start talking about math problems. Mm-hmm. He's just that big to change the culture. Mm-hmm. Agreed. As far as on that side, because of what he represent. So you can do it. You don't have to be in the same uh, thing that people are doing and be able to say you get scared that. It, you're going to lose your audience. That's what they're scared of. But they're scared that if they say something, yeah. right, that they're going to lose their audience and lose what they have. I, and to me, true. I don't understand that because that's not a real artist to me. Real artists, are, they take us places. Yes. They take, that's why I, she doesn't, she doesn't like Ye, but that's why I love Kanye so much because he's fearless. He's I like Ye. I just don't yeah. like that he's married to white women. Okay. Like well, yeah. well, whatever it is. I'm just saying, I like the fact that Kanye is not afraid to say, take, take, take on this there. album, 808 and Heartbreak, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, on this album, my dark Donda, twisted family. Here, is yes. we, Donda, this is what we're doing. Compared to every Phenomenal. artist, is like yeah. Yeah. giving you the same be, yeah. song, same, same song, artist, yes. same yes. everything. Yes. Yep. Look what happened when Dirk dropped that All My Life record. Everybody was so happy that it was like something different. Something yeah, different. Something different. So it yeah. tells artists that the world we want different. You want different. We want different. Yeah, we there just you, go. you. But you yeah. here's the thing: different ain't never came out your ass. That's why you need a producer in the room. That's why you need writers in the room. Because the writer and producers are going to give you something different. I watched you speak about that. Yeah, exactly. I watched you speak about because you told them too. Like again, you told me the other day. You was like, "Listen, the yellow brick roll is not real." Yes. This is what Ray told me the other day that the yellow brick roll is not real. So at the end of the day, it's all a fantasy. But you can win if you do something. Yep. That is 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 monumental and different. Yep. And and, and you can win. You don't have to follow that. You can win. Yeah. Being different. History shows. Every one of us that came out was different. And we all sold records. And gave us... A, and not only that, that's why we want to see y'all perform now. Because you gave Everything us something different. different. Like, EPMD was different Nobody, from Nice and Smooth. Was, everybody was different. And we all won. So why do you have to do... Like, we live in a world right now. It's like, oh, that's... I could do that, too. Yep. Oh, I could do that, too. And we follow and make the same exact record. Exactly. So now the women don't know what artist that is. They know the date of the song. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, he sings that? <laughs> I asked a girl. Yeah. She just said it. Boop, 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 boop. Like, she just said it. Like, I don't even know what the song is. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, you know the song. By the way, you don't want to tell me about Pound Town. Thank you. And I told you about that peaches and eggplant song. Too. Pound Town is played in Japan right now. That's crazy. What? A hundred million times. That's crazy. I would have never thought... It's the biggest world, one of the biggest, world, biggest songs in the world. 
We got to just, insane. I just want us to be better. I'm sorry, guys. Wait, yeah. I heard you. I was being nosy. I'm not sure if I heard it right, but I think you said that you like R&B more than hip hop. I was listening yeah, to that. Because it's, cause it's, that's what we're doing, sampling the R&B music. Yep. So Uh-oh. you do agree when Ray said that hip hop killed R&B. I don't know if it killed it. I just think that, um, the concept of hip hop. Yeah. Hip. Okay. Let me tell you what hip hop is. R and B was in the suburb suburbs, and they let their hip hop cousin move in, <laughs> and yes. and that nigga started fucking. R and B was making a baby a year, and hip hop was fucking everybody in the neighborhood. Next thing you know, they need the house, so now they push <laughs> you out the house. I'm just telling you, and now it's too easy to do. But people are still here, though. We still had Trey and Chris Brown them come in. We still had people come in. It still impacted heavy. It just was smaller. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Hip hop did become huge, and R and B is about what you R and B is about what, how you present yourself and what you say, and hip hop is about who you are. So hip hop, like Luther Vandross, we don't know what his like. I was listening I to Freddie Jackson, right. uh, uh, rock with me tonight. Like I was, and I was like, this nigga talking about fucking a woman. <laughs> And I'm I'm not saying I know Freddie I, Jackson's business. I just business. told you the way not, that the creator is. Yeah, I'm I'm not saying yeah. I know his music, but I'm just saying we just yeah. love the song. Mm-hmm. We didn't like in hip hop. It's not about the song; it's about who sings the song. Because if we like who sings the song, then we are going to believe what they say. R and B, on the other hand, because like none of us know what Neo's personality really is. Neo is a real nigga, by the way. Right. Usher is a real nigga. nigga. These are yeah. real yeah. niggas. Yeah. They just R and B stars, so their yeah. their brand is different. But rappers, you have to be a real nigga and a rapper. That's why right. if a rapper snitches, we're like we're not fucking with him no more. Right. A R and B nigga could snitch. Right, and we wouldn't matter. It'd be like we don't care. We don't. We don't. We don't listen to you because you, you a real nigga. We listen to you because you make music that we can fuck to, or music mm-hmm. that we can do stuff to. Compared to rap, where it's like my body, my booty hole brown, pussy round. It's like we don't give a fuck. We just look at her and be like, yeah, that that looks like she sings that song. It definitely. Yeah, yo, but like the ill part though. Too, I'm not disrespecting yeah. about it. I'm just being honest. The ill part though too. We are, our kids are growing up to children. We grew up to old people. Like, we grew up to Luther Vandross, oh. like Luther Baker, you know, all the uh, OJs, the Whispers. We grew up to that as children. Old people grew, um, raised us. Now the kids is raising the kids. You know, I tell people, today, this is the first time in history that we are listening to the same music our kids listen to. Right. So when Kendrick album dropped, I'm bumping it. And I look on, Little Raymond was 14, 10 at the time. I look on his Instagram and he bumping. I was took a syrup and I'm like, damn, he listens to the same thing I'm listening to. So now I got to take how he interprets it matters to me yes. now. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, 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 now I'm like, fuck, what are they saying? Because my 10 year old is really listening to it. it. So now when you, so now when you listen to like, I ain't gay, but I let a bitch eat me out. One day I was playing it at the pool and the kids were singing it. And I was like, what the fuck are we doing? But you can't be the old nigga. Cause if you're the old nigga, that you that, that they, so you kind of gotta be like, here's something else. Mm. That's why I love Bruno Mars so much, cause he makes great music that I could play with my kids, mm. and I don't feel bad about it. I'm gonna say one thing, mm-hmm. no disrespect. Mm-hmm. This city right here mm-hmm. is very influ- very influential. Mm-hmm. Atlanta, Georgia. It's not just me. Andre said it. Jermaine Dupri said it. This city. Haywire, and we don't have to follow, but we did. Atlanta, Georgia. Everything that you hear that was played by one hundred and three, because don't forget, whatever. What's the program director over there? Oh, uh, Reggie Ross. Reggie, whatever Reggie's playing, the world followed. I was in the game then. Mm-hmm. Power one hundred and five in New York, Hot ninety seven. What Reggie playing? Oh, in the strip club they. The strip club is is the A and R. Yep. For a radio station, so this place right here, and your best rapper, Andre said, "I don't know what happened to my city." <laughs> so I'm He's not so dis- right. He's I'm so. Right. I can't up. even laugh. I'm not making. This I can't. Up. Even, I can't even like and defend it. And y'all know I'm an like Atlanta guy too. So all the songs you hear that you hear that's like what the. Fuck the, who says that? Georgia. Started it. You have vulgar language. Everybody's looking at me. It's like, what you yes. going to say? I'm like, yeah, he's right. I, I'm not going to say that. He's 100% right. Like, mm-hmm. and for me, it's like, I just, 
I don't know how to. It's like the internet is un, out of control. Like I, yeah. this is random, Eric, but I, I say this. I remember being fourteen, going to the discount mall, working for three days to make enough. You know, I'm going with this. <laughs> going to the discount mall, working for three days. Me and my homies, just to get on the bus, the 89S, College Park train station. Eric has no College idea Park train station. He know what all this is. College Park train station, the five points, to go to the right African to buy our first porno. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Me and my nigga, Boo Man, put $10 each, took the, took, had that shit like this, Eric, like, like under the shirt, like I don't want nobody to see this shit. Nobody can know we got it. <laughs> Brought it home, right. had to wait for somebody's mom to be gone. So my shit, mom was gone. Watched the movie together, like, oh my god, this is incredible. Yo, think about all the shit I just had to do. That? Hold on, think about all the shit. Now, watch it. Right. You know you live, right? I know. I know. But here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part. Here's the point of it. All you got to do now is log on a porn hub right now and say, yes, I'm 18. Right. Everything has become too easy. Right. And when it becomes too easy, we don't appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You don't appreciate it, you fumble it. Fumble you it. fumble it, somebody picks it up, and now it's not ours. Not ours. So you're 100% right. right, but right. it's too easy. Yeah, it It's too easy. easy. Anybody, can a star. anybody could come do it. Anybody, anybody could be a star. star. That's anybody. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. like, like, mm -hmm. like the stars are now based on mm -hmm. antics right. more than it is talent. But Nicki Minaj said, this is Nicki, she was a superstar. She said that we used to listen to talented people. Yeah. Now we listen to popular people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it? So this is where we at at this time. And she's one of them, too, in the game that's popular. So she's saying this, too, not trying to, you know, diminish her shit, but she's just keeping it with real in her heart. Yep. Saying this is where we at. Popularity. What is popular? The moment. Yep. Again, it won't be here, but for the moment, this is where we at. Yep. So and everybody can become a star and can do it. And either it's going to break itself down right. and we're going to build it back up, right. which I feel like is what we are because I was just it's talking. Somewhat close. I was yeah. about to say, somewhat close. For us to be making so much money in the music yeah. business, guys, why are we not hiring more people? Why are we not? Why is the music not getting better? Why, is this, why are we not breaking more artists? Mm -hmm. You want to know why? Because these people that are signing shit are just playing Hungry Hungry Hippo and signing something you did that worked. And now they're chased behind that. Now, here's what happens when they get you. You think I'm with them now, like I'm on cruise control, and they're looking at you like, "What the fuck did you do the first time?" Because we don't know. Disposable. So now, now the industry is like looking like, dog. We're making more money, and we're still on, like we're in freeze. Like, mm -hmm. how many labels are putting out albums right now? Yeah. None. Think about it. everybody's just like this shooting. Yeah. I'm good for shooting. That's yeah. one of the reasons why none yeah. of the al no hip hop albums yeah. have been able to be, be number we one. But we 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 out can't numbers. determine what's important anymore. Mm -hmm. We can't say, man, this is Eric Sermon. He got a message. We need to put, we need to all wrap our energy yeah. around that. Nobody. Nobody. They're not, because yeah. now you got to go to a white kid at TikTok yeah. and say why he's important. They're like, right. whoa, the fans like this dance right here. They don't care. Capitalists don't care. Every five about the years, we had a superstar. We had, yeah. if it was just 50, if it was DMX, if it was this person, whatever. We had somebody who came in and shocked the world. We have none of that. And we, don't even have, and we don't even have one close. The closest one is Ice Spice, maybe. That's what I was. Right. She's the closest might be one. On the verge of but, one. But here's the thing no disrespect. For her to become a global superstar, the music has to be way better. Yeah. And Agreed. here's the hard part who the fuck can tell her that? Because everything she's done so far has worked. Exactly. So if, I, if it's and working, y'all want me to. Yeah. Now, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like I tell people, you why tell me, why well, I gotta do something different? It, different. it worked yeah. until it stops working. It stopped working. And then you're like, what the fuck am I gonna do? And now you're calling everybody like, hey, Ray, can you give us a hit? No, bro. Too late, there's another girl behind Now it's another girl coming. Exactly. So for me, yeah. it's just kind of like, we just, machine is just going and going and going. And until we decide, until somebody's in the room saying, are we sure we wanna do this? Like D-Dot always tells the story. He said, when Columbia came to him, he's the mad rapper, he's like, Columbia came to him and said, hey, got this artist 50 Cent. He has a song, How to Rob. We want you to get on it. d -Dot was like, I'll get on it because it matches the Matt Rapper's brand. Mm -hmm. But y'all know this dude is going to have a lot of fucking trouble, right? Mm -hmm. So you had to think about that. Now, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Rapper mm -hmm. dies now, and it's like, shit, the <laughs> stream's going up. Yep. You know what I'm trying to say? It's just the game, bro. Yeah. Game. It's the game. game. It's up. fucked up. So yeah. for me, it's like, until we have people who care in charge, who care about more than money, we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. And here's the worst part. Hip-hop is not ran by black people. Right. We make the music. 
We are the culture. We set the trends, but we don't write the tricks, and we don't determine who's important. And until that happens, we are in fucking trouble. That's I true. do think we on the verge of like a um, a reset with hip hop. I think people are getting tired of these kind of quick, no real thought put into I things. I think that deal, that's because why I'm out. That's why, that's we why need I'm out people talking. too. That's so why, that, but that's yeah. why I think podcasts are important because yeah. this this podcast interview can be more important than any song because you get a chance yeah. to get your message out yeah. the way you want it to. I heard to. the last guy saying too, like. Every episode was a, a new song yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I paid attention to that. That's, yeah. that's, that's really dope. That's what and this is. Um, yesterday we spoke about yesterday too. Like, Eric, maybe this might be the, the thing that we need to do to make change. Because I feel like you feel. That's why That's why I'm talking this way and, and want to do certain things because I feel the shift. Yes. Because when I hear people talking, I'm watching my daughters be like, they used to be the ratchetest. I used to have some ratchet children, man. And playing, I, I mean, love my mother was saying I love every it. playing every ratchet song that came out. All of a sudden, they woke up and they just switch and start playing Sir and 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 OG and all these other people that came out of of this R and B new R and B music mm-hmm. of you know of her and all that stuff. They was doing this and and um and you know all this stuff before it got popular. I'm like, what is this new stuff? Daniel Caesar, all the stuff they started, they just made a switch. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, what happens? Like, yeah, no, we, I'm tired of hearing that music. Man, that's, I, I pray that that's what we are. 25 years old now. I pray that that's what we are. Too. Me too. I pray that that's what but we are. But you know what I think the sign is? Like, Tiana Taylor's company and how she's bringing back stage presence and kind of developing artists that are are already even getting mm-hmm. better. Like what she did with Lola Brooke at Summer Jam and yeah. making sure they're not just on stage Phenomenal. running around screaming. She's making sure they're giving a performance, performance now. Like why, back then. Why are rappers rapping on their lyrics? I don't know what that's from. I don't get that. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I, I came to see the show. I didn't came to the see karaoke. The new era does that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The new era is like, yeah. but guess what? Somebody's not e- Even Rick Ross and them, all until all them still, the majority of people rhyme on top of their records. That's why. Oh. That's why. That's not a performance. I don't know. Like, like you said, it's like, karaoke. Like what yeah. It's like karaoke. It's like, yeah. like dog. And, I, and I believe me now, maybe because, again, you can you can hear it better. Yeah. And not every song, but even the major artists are doing it. Yep. And I don't understand it neither. And like I said before, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't bother nobody, so can't knock it. I'm for Eric. But I'm like you. If I go to a show, I want to hear... Live, because I can play the radio in my car. I'm, I'm, I'm for Eric Sermon running any record label right now. Amen. I'm for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be the first be vote. Sleep. Ever. You know how tired I am, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you get older. I'm like brother. Uh, I'm 32. Oh, brother, we good. We good. Wait, right. before we go, we gotta do credit check. So oh yeah, know for what sure. Credit check is. Let's do credit check. So we do this thing, part of the show called credit check, where you can just give credit to somebody who played a role in your life, an unsung hero, like two or three people that you're like, yo, shout out to that person. Because our thought process is, is that person can now take that clip and show the world. Look, look. Yeah. And a lot of us are unsung heroes. So okay. for me, it's like, just credit check. I have two of them, but they, but they dead. That's okay. I'm going to say, Russell Simmons mm-hmm. was, was the main one because he was the first one to Tell me what the humble yeah. word was. Yes. Stay humble. Yeah. You know what that meant at 17 yeah. years old. And the fact that he he was able to guide me the whole time through my career while I was at Rush Management and then on Def Jam. Yeah. So I, I was able, that's why my crew is called Def Squad. Yeah. Because it's Def, Def Jam. Jam. Yeah, I knew that. Um, my cousin, um, Duke, he was the one that. Back then, where I came from, Regis Park, um, Brentwood, he was the one that um, sh- showed me how to rhyme. Yeah, gave me his turntables. Um, I used to have. Um, it was Lee Lee Jeans. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to have the Lees with the, with the <laughs> mock neck and the and then the BBDs and the whatever, whatever yeah. like that. And then we used to put the tag on our pants yeah. on the back of our jacket. All that shit. I didn't have no money, but he had it. So he showed me everything. That I knew, so when I went to Paris's neighborhood, I tell you I was already advanced. Yeah. And my mom, who I just buried two days ago, mm-hmm. um, and everything that I am is is her. Rest in peace, every to mom. Every time I come in my mouth, 
everything I ever learned, everything how she ever was, being a giver, being a person who was um, just a prayer warrior, you know, she, uh, that she, she just le- since she was 11, she just prayed for everybody. It doesn't mm. matter if you did her wrong, whatever, she just did it. And she gave to whoever to, mm. you know. Um, she was she walked with King when she was eleven in St. Augustine, Florida. That's where she's from. Um, but you know, um, she lost a battle with a disease called sarcoidosis. Mm. You know, black people got it a lot. Um, Bernie Mac died from it. Mm. You know? um, but those are my three people who I give the most credit to. But mostly, definitely, Mom though. She's everything. Absolutely. But, but those two, I give it to. Yeah. Uh, so I'm. Uh, I just to me, I know we're done. But I just you have did you do you ever work with Pac? You ever work with Big? No. I I didn't get a chance to, to do that except again, I knew Pac. And there was a story that my my friend Bernard told me that he brung Biggie Smalls to the barbershop I was at. Mm. And I didn't listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> no. Crazy. Crazy. I was just listen, I know somebody that met Pac or Big. I like I gotta ask. I'm sorry. Just and think about it too with the fact that didn't Biggie yeah. Smalls was at my video shoot, yeah. Hitting Switches, was it for the Who's the Man soundtrack, and uh, he was a, everywhere I went. He was a, he was every scene. He followed me every scene because mm. Puffy shot the video with Hype Williams. That was yeah. they, one of their first videos they shot. Wow. So and Biggie Smalls had told somebody, listen, I want to go on that Eric Sermon album, whatever. Mm. And um, Tracy Waples was a you know, that's a wop. Was um, Puffy's good friend. Yeah. She was like, yo, Eric, Biggie want to get on your album. I'm like, yo, I already got people on it. I got yeah. Keith Murray, Redman, you know, K- K- and I, got pe- I had my own people. Yeah. So, I had an opportunity. I just didn't, um, didn't look at it. Mm-hmm. You know. She asked another question. I just had to ask. That's basic. Okay, so, this is the guy show. It stands for Goats and Underdogs. Do you consider yourself a goat or underdog? I consider myself iconic. Mm. I think that, um, I think that the, 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 the yeah, uh, LL Cool J to find the to find the the goat name, and I think that since he was here longer than most of us, I think that he is what Swiss said on the podcast. If you want to give somebody the goat, you don't give it to Todd Smith. You know, so it's a few of us that that are iconic, but they're bigger than me. Mm. You know. Well, I'm gonna say you're a goat. <laughs> Because I don't think I've ever ran for a celebrity in my <laughs> life. <laughs> in my entire life, I ran to meet one celebrity in my whole life, and that was you. So I just want to tell you, thank you for being on the show. You are welcome here anytime. And I oh, want to find some stuff. I'm, about to, I'm, about to, I'm looking for a, 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 a crib now. I'm trying to see what, what um, where's Turner? Turner Field? Turner. No, is there a town called Turner? No. No, not, not is it Turner? No. no. Turner, Turner Hill Road. Tucker. Tucker. Tucker? It might be. Yeah, is it small? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, come to Tucker. Yeah, but, but, but it's, 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 it's been around for a while? Yeah, Tucker, Georgia. Okay, but that's not it then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't him leading us on like... Where's yeah, McDonough? Yeah, no. Where's McDonough? McDonough's McDonough's South. Thing, yeah. McDonough South. See, I'm because I ain't been there for a while, so I got to figure out where, you know, where they got the, the land at, because I like mm. to have some land, though, too. Go to, go to the south side. So. McDonough, I got 22 acres at one of my houses where? in Fayetteville. Fayetteville. I got 22 acres. Fayetteville. Somebody else said that, too. Again, I'm like, yo, I but go. I know that area because of, cause of Luda. Yeah. Well, good. Ross lived down there, at, but big boy, a lot of people live in Fayetteville. Mm-hmm. I live, that's where I live. But I would say Fayetteville. Neighbors Come on. Stars. We subdivision? Go. No, no, it's his neighborhood, but I live in a subdivision, for sure. Okay. But I got my one of my houses got twenty two acres, the other one got ten. So I like land. Like I okay, well you got a floss on this right now. Right? No, no, I'm saying yeah, I like, like land. But here I will say this. You no, know me too. It's I a like forty five minute ride. Yeah, I like land. I got to drive forty five minutes I'm to go used home. To that. That's yeah, I'm from Long Island, yeah. so I, people be like, um, "It's far." I'm like, "No, it ain't," because I go. To, I used to go to Manhattan every day, and that's an hour away from where I live at. That's Sound like Jen's life. So. We used to those commutes. Yeah, that's why I'm commute. like, I like yeah. to drive. I'm cool with that. Yeah, so yeah, fa- come come to Fayetteville, brother. We can do a podcast called Live from Fayetteville. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it right now. Or we just talk shit. Like, they got some spaces left over there. Yeah, though. they yeah. got space. They build a lot of shit over there. They probably yeah. Jack yeah, Dan sells houses. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew he was coming. <laughs> Queens get the money right. for sure. Too? Yeah, we do a little bit of everything. Oh, we got to talk to you because we got some of money. Queens Everybody gets the money. Okay. All right. All right. Thank well, you so I just want to say thank you for thank you, Eric, for coming to the show. You're more than yes. welcome. And look out for something in the future because I want to work with Eric. Or I don't care yes. what it is. I'm working with this brother. You got your best friends 
Your attorney, let's go. Exactly. So you know I'm gonna I'm gonna see you. I go, well, I'm gonna see That's you, but we're gonna make some people. shit happen. Let's go. Wait, okay. wait, you gotta tell everybody about our sponsor. Oh, shout out to our sponsor, Token Carry. Hello. Token right. Carry, yeah, that's he's, he's messed up. You almost took your took your shit away. <laughs> no, no, but here's the thing. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? I'm waiting for the set and I also will get to the place where I like gift you a set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but don't miss <laughs> Mess up the money. Right. <laughs> Come on now. Don't drop. Don't fumble the bag. Shout out to our sponsors. Like, subscribe, all that other good stuff. Let's go. Shout out to Thanks, Eric guys. Sermon <laughs> for coming on the show. Let's go. I, I'm not buying new cameras, lights, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Too sad.